Hi, my name is Michael Sheldon. I'm a professor of English, but I'm also a an historian, and uh, one of my subjects, the latest one, is Winston Churchill. I suppose the first thing you ought to know about Winston, he was born in a palace, Blenheim Palace, which is one of the largest private palaces in all of England. It's an amazing place. The windows alone, it takes a year to wash them, so you can imagine what kind of palace this is. Winston was the grandson of a duke, and he was born with a sense, really, of destiny because his family went back several generations and had been enormously important in British history. So he had a sense that somewhere in the future there was a special inheritance for him, a kind of inheritance of national importance. Who would Winston Churchill be on the world stage? That was the thing that preoccupied him, and he had a phrase for it. He said, the stars in their courses guided my progress. Though he wasn't a great religious man, he thought there was some sort of force in the universe that was guiding him to his destiny. He was only in his 20s when he decided to become a member of the British Parliament. He ran for that office. As the British would say, he stood for office. And won when he was still in his early 20s, gave his maiden speech in Parliament when he was a man of only 26. And by the age of 31, he had become a, a real force in national politics in Britain. Many people said that he would become prime minister before he was 40. This was a kind of double-edged uh, sword for, for Winston. He wanted to be prime minister before he was 40, but he was afraid that uh, too much success too soon might, might ruin his career. In American politics, we don't think too much about being in the cabinet, but in British politics, it's very important. And the political office that he held there was, first of all, sort of like our Secretary of Commerce. And this office got him launched in the cabinet, but it was more important because he was the youngest man to join the British cabinet in half a century. By the time a few years had gone by, he had reached some of the highest offices in the British cabinet before he was 40. He was Home Secretary, somewhat like our Attorney General in the, in the American system. And then he became the grandest office of all, First Lord of the Admiralty. In that position, he was the head of what turned out to be uh, the largest and most powerful navy on the surface of the earth. He was in charge of five different fleets. He was preparing for what he thought would be a kind of cataclysm, uh, a war that in fact would break out in 1914. And this is where Winston Churchill becomes a very important figure in world affairs. Winston once said, I believe in personality. And I think it was important for him to know that through the sheer force of his personality, he could conquer any kind of obstacle. And he went through several of these along the way, but the greatest of them was the one that he faced when war broke out in 1914. When the war broke out, he was at the head of all the preparations. But in the first year, there were many setbacks and he received the blame for them. The worst of these setbacks was on the Eastern Front in a place called Gallipoli. That turned out to be a, a true fiasco. And when it failed and many thousands died and ships were lost, uh, he stood at the center of the, um, at the arena in which people pointed their finger and said, it's his fault. Others were to blame. He took the blame on himself. He was eventually dismissed from the cabinet. He lost his career, and at that time, almost everyone was of the opinion Winston Churchill would never rise again, that his career was over. What I think is an important part of my book is the lesson that Winston learned at this time, that you can pick yourself up from a major disaster, put your life together again, and go forward. It would take him another 25 years to rise to the position of Prime Minister, but he learned his lesson early in these 20s and 30s of his, of his life and kept faith in himself. The stars in their courses eventually turned in his favor, and in his 60s, he became Prime Minister of England.